What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. So before Christmas, we decided that we wanted to get ourselves a new camera. But the question was, what do we get? Because we do both video and photo, we had to try and find a camera that does both of those things very well. And that took a lot of <laughs> searching, yep. uh, checking specs and watching reviews and stuff from various different people on various different cameras until finally, we decided that the one to go for was the Fuji X-T30. Actually, why do we not have it in this video? The Fuji X-T30. Here it is. So for this video, we thought we would just have a little sit down and chat about our thoughts of what we think of the Fuji X-T30. Uh, we've been using it for about four months or so yeah, now. Yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, we just thought we would give our thoughts about it because we know when we were researching cameras, a video like this was always helpful to see True. the good parts and the bad parts. So yeah, we'll run through our thoughts and exactly what we think. Where do we start? So just in case this is your first time watching us here on this channel, we do actually make quite a variation of videos where we have w with this camera. We've made cinematic little B-roll sequences. We've made like documentary style, little photography vlogs and stuff. And we also take a lot of photos. Yes. So I feel like we've kind of tested it out in pretty much all ways that it could be used, I think. So in this video, we're just gonna get straight into it. The things that we think are good about the camera and the little bad points as well. And we're not gonna dive in too much into specs and everything because we get a little bored by it and we're also just not that, we're just not that type of person that's gonna dive into that sort of detail. But anyway, let's get on with it. So one of the main things that drew us to the Fujifilm in general is the look of the Fujifilm cameras. They just always, always look so good in photos. Like they if you do. have it in your photo, it'll just look so good with that vintage style. We actually have a camera bag that's quite vintagey looking as well. So it kind of like matches in that way too. Yeah, that didn't actually lean us towards the camera too much. It was just a nice benefit. It's a, it's a bonus. And um, when we were researching, uh, as well, as much as I like the look of that, I was never going to choose that. Based on uh, looks. Based on right? it. I was just kind of glad that when I did look, it actually turned out that that was probably the best option. Yeah. So yeah, quite nice. So yeah, that's just the first good point. Not that you should base your camera choice no. on how the camera looks, yeah. but when you choose a Fuji, it's a nice extra. So obviously one of the most important, if not the most important thing when you're looking to buy a new camera is the budget that you have and the price point of the cameras that you're looking at. And the Fuji X-T30 that we got is pretty reasonably priced, I think, for, for what it can do. So definitely the price point was important for us for this being under a thousand and we actually got it in a Black Friday deal, which also we sweetened did. the deal a little bit. Keep an eye out for those <laughs> deals when you're looking to buy a new camera. Definitely. But yeah, the price point was very important and we felt like for what we get with this camera, it was just a very, very good value for money. That was the word I couldn't think of. It's very good value for money. So when we were researching the cameras, it kind of came down to the Fuji X-T30 and the Sony A6400, which I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you're watching this to kind of see what you might buy, that may be another camera, probably is that you're considering because they're very close in price point and we were very close to buying the 6400 and then I, I can't actually remember exactly what tilled it. To be fair, the looks of this would tilt it now if I was to look back, but they pretty much do everything the same. You'd have to watch another video that dives deep into the specs and the little things, but they're very similar in terms of performance and what they can do. So I probably didn't make your choice any easier there, but <laughs> just wanted to let you know in case you didn't come across the 6400. So another thing that we liked about this camera and other Fujis in general, if you've used a Fuji camera before, you might have probably come across this already, but it is of course the film simulations that you can choose between um, and kind of give your footage a kind of old camera, vintagey kind of look. Yeah, they're different film stocks. So that's what they're based on. They're sort of replicating the look of old film stocks and it can kind of give you a cool look in camera so you don't have to worry about grading and it looks pretty good. We actually started out using the Eterna film simulation because we heard a lot of good things about it. It's not really our style. We've actually been using the Astia Soft, I believe it is recently, and it, it looks pretty nice. We make a few adjustments in Premiere and kind of get the look that we like. So very handy and useful to have that you can do that in camera. When it comes to color grading the videos from the Fuji, it's actually a pretty smooth process. The 200 megabyte files 
mean that it's quite easy to kind of shift things around when it comes to move around colors, reduce highlights, increase shadows and stuff. So the color grading process is pretty nice. And another thing that we like is how small and cute and compact that it is. It literally fits right in the palm of my hand, but that's also something that kind of falls into the negative side as well, but we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, it is really small. You could take the lens off and slide this into your pocket if you really literally. want it to, which is always nice. And finally, for the good points, you have those Fuji colors, which I'm sure you've heard a lot of people touch on. In photo mode, taking photos, especially at like golden hour, literally you don't so really nice. even need to edit the photos coming out of this thing. They look so good, as I'm sure you've heard a lot. I'll not say any more. They just look really good. So if you're into your photography, Fuji colors is all you need to know. <laughs> So while there are lots of things that we really do enjoy about this camera, there are of course some limitations and that is to be expected. Just some. So like Christina said, the camera is compact. You can pretty much fit it into your pocket, but that also comes with a few negatives. They're not a huge deal. They're just little annoyances that come with such a small body. And that is, you have quite a few controls on this. All the dials and stuff are crammed into a very small space. The main annoyance that you may have heard a lot of people have before with this camera is the good old Q button, which is right pretty much where your thumb would be when you're holding the camera. So if you're holding it down by your side, your thumb will hit the Q button from time to time and you'll hold it up and there'll just be the menu on your screen. So that means a lot of the time we are accidentally hitting buttons or turning dials that we're not supposed to be turning. And sometimes it does get a little bit frustrating, um, especially if you've got big fingers like me, you know, <laughs> there's no room for my fingers on this camera. Um, so you do just have to be careful with the buttons. You do get used to it though after a while. At the beginning it was worse, but yeah, you get used to it after a while, just kind of we know your way around. actually just did a new firmware update which i think does solve that problem we need i think we need to change something but i think you have to hold it instead of just tapping it for the menu to come up yeah and uh, there also is a grip that we're probably going to get for it just so you have a little bit more grip in the camera because right. the grip is very small. very small um if you're someone who doesn't like to have a strap or a wrist strap it could be a little bit sketchy just walking around holding this thing as you would normally hold the camera because yeah very small grip on it so the next point may be one of the biggest sort of letdowns with this camera, if you want to call it that, is that there is no IBIS in the camera. And when we were researching, this was one of the things that we were like, oh, maybe, especially for video and we do a lot of handheld stuff, that might be a problem. It is a little bit annoying. We, in our videos now, kind of use a lot of tripod shots and yeah. stuff, so it doesn't really matter as much. But if you're doing a lot of handheld stuff, uh, not having the IBIS can be a little bit annoying and for certain shots you just will need a gimbal yeah. but at the very least you can get a lens that has um, stabilization in it and that'll help a little bit but yeah no stabilization in this camera is a little bit of annoying and it's probably the one extra thing that we would like it to have to yeah. kind of kind of be the perfect little camera. Another thing that has been a problem for us, but it might not be a problem for you, but it is for us and it's the weather resistance of the camera. Now it's a problem for us because here in Ireland it does rain a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah, sometimes we can get stuck in rain and now we're like, oh no, guard the camera, run for your life. Yeah, yeah. it gets a little bit sketchy because obviously if you're out in the rain, your camera's gonna get wet. We have got a little cover and stuff for yeah. it and we just try not to keep it out. The lens is actually weather resistant, but the actual camera body itself isn't. So if you're someone who does a lot of landscape photography out in pretty harsh conditions, this may not be the camera for you just for that reason. And the final point on the bad side of things, that something we've been having a little bit of an issue with recently, I don't know if it's our specific lens Friends. or something we're doing, um, and it is getting a little bit of soft focus in a lot of photos, especially when it comes to like, forests and stuff it seems um a lot of the photos we were looking through finding it hard to find exactly where the camera was focusing yeah. and i'm not quite sure if that was something we were doing or not i mentioned it in our last video too we have actually done a few firmware updates since which actually may have fixed the problem because the photos we took the last day i didn't notice it in too many of them not sure whether that's something we should really add to this yeah. or if it's a specific problem we've had problem. but we did look it up in a few forums and that and a few other people have seemed to have the same problem it's the xf 18 to 55 mm lens that we're using and 
yeah, hopefully that's that problem gone with yeah. the firmware update because it did mention in it that there was a few bug fixes with stabilization and stuff. So just something that we thought we would mention because we had a problem with it. The point is, always keep your camera up to date. Yeah. And I think that's pretty much it. Those are the good points and the bad points. At least from found. our experience. Yeah. As we said before, we do both photo and video. So I think we've all round used pretty much all aspects of this camera. And we've got a good idea of how, how well it works. But overall, it is a pretty solid little camera. We've been loving using it. Uh, besides those few fo photos that were out of focus, we've loved the results of yeah. both the video and photos from the camera, so yeah. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with our purchase. Obviously, if you have a bigger budget, then something else might be on your list, but for the price point and what our budget was, I feel like this is just the perfect little, little, Camera. Camera. Hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully some of those points that we mentioned you maybe didn't know of and now you can take that into consideration when you're thinking about buying a camera if that's what you're actually doing. If you want to check out how the Fuji X-T30 performs then you can check out our other videos. We use it in pretty much all of our recent videos so you can see how it performs in like cinematic videos and all those types of things that we've used it for. True. But anyway we're going to stop blabbering on here. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did Give it a big thumbs up, it really helps us out because we're a new channel here. And maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more videos. If there's anything else that you wanted to know that we maybe didn't cover in this video, just drop it down in the comments below. If you have a question or anything, we'll be sure to answer you. But I think that's it. As we always say guys, take it easy. Don't be a stranger. Check. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze, but the grills in my mouth double as a freeze, but the grills in my mouth.